Hello, welcome to another edition or another episode or however you want to refer to it as of the independent creator. Now, tonight we're actually going to take a little bit of a break, not looking at different uh, projects or software or platforms or anything like that, but we're actually going to take a look at the hard lessons learned for trying to make a community around whatever project or anything that you're trying to to uh to do and also kind of like a self-reflection as well for myself and uh just try to get out there it's just because i know many people out there are probably dealing with the same issues are trying to figure out what to do how to get past these roadblocks and stuff like that so that's pretty much what we're going to be talking about tonight in this episode I'm making sure i got the right scene going here we go now one of the things that many creators, community managers, 
creators of all sizes and shapes and colors and whatever else is trying to get a community to grow around your project or whatever that you are trying to do. I know for myself, trying to get a community growing around the independent creator space that are the people who are actually interested in like alternative platforms like live space, own cast, uh, share play places that are not discord or gilded, or, you know, it's just try to build out a website that you want to work on in kind of uh, forums or community software and trying to get a community to grow on any of these particular avenues is one of probably one of the hardest things that anybody can do really, because you pretty much, you have to believe what you're trying to build yourself and you're trying to part or um, partake it to other people to see what you are wanting to build and try to get them into your, not really want to say into your fold, but into your community and try to, you know, have some kind of faith and say, oh yeah, I can see this working out. The one thing, one of the hard lessons is that I've learned so far is that no matter how much you think you're doing, it's not enough, really. Um, I have to, I can say that I am like really, really poor at doing any kind of self-promotion or anything like that. It's just, I don't really have that in my own uh, personality. Is I'm really not the one to type to go out there and say, hey, you got to come to this place if you want to do this. You really need to do this. You need to come here and do this. It's like, one of the things where I, I, I know for myself that that's one of the things I fail out or fail at. And I've been trying to, you know, get along and trying to, you know, work on that as much as possible. But the problem is, as I know with a lot of you out there as well, is that you find yourself spread very thin and trying to do all of the things you're trying to be a, a, a jack of all trades, but master of none really. And that is, you know, some of the guiding factors of why I wanted to do this episode is to, you know, bring the light that, yeah, I know I suck at a lot of things and I know you were probably thinking the same way and you're not alone. There's many of us that are just, you know, going flying by the seat of our pants and trying to figure out what the hell to do. And Really, there isn't any kind of uh, a playbook that one can go to a store and, p- and pick up, go to Barnes and Noble and pick up a book and say, if you follow steps one, two, three, you'll re- receive success within a month. There's no way that anything like that is going to happen at all. I know a lot of people on YouTube constantly harp onto the fact that if you just post out on TikTok or if you do this on Twitter and you'll see success in no time. The problem is, is that yes, a majority, or I should say a large number of people do do that and have received some, uh, some success, but not everyone will be by following that, that those, those procedures will see the same success. And I think it's kind of disingenuous for, you know, people that are on YouTube or, you know, the, the stream coaches and uh, content creator coaches and stuff like that are harping out this information that is, it's, I, I don't want to say anything uh, negatory to them, but I, I believe that their heart is in the right place, but their actions are not uh, in the correct place for a majority of people. And I think one of those things is that I've tried TikTok many a times. I tried different ways of going about it. Tried, you know, posting out videos uh, every other day uh, that were basically small clips of previous episodes or uh, shows or anything that streams that I've done. And I got some movement on that. But the thing is, especially with TikTok, TikTok is kind of like a hellscape. It is, uh, I, I replied to uh, Tree's um, post over on Blue Sky earlier today that 
she had posted a TikTok and only got like six views. And I looked in her screenshot and others were getting like a couple hundred or like a thousand. And I was like, well, it's kind of like a Mary Poppins bag. It's no matter how much great content that you put into it, it's you're going to get more than likely not as much viewership while other people are putting or doing copies upon copies of other people's content and are getting like millions of views where it's essentially the same thing. It's just, they're just doing their own version of it. It's kind of like, well, it's not really original content. You're just taking uh, an apple pie and saying, oh, I made this apple pie, but it's, you're just, you know, I know my analogy is just failing there, but it's, it's the same thing where it's kind of like, no matter how, you have to put in your mindset is no matter how much hard work and dedication you put into a piece of content that you kind of have to expect that it is going to fall flat. Every single thing that you're going to do as out there is going to fall flat. I mean, it's kind of, um, uh, set that bar pretty low. And if it, it goes up above it, Hey, that's great. But set your expectations low. So you don't have that, that feeling of failure. And I know a lot of people say, don't look at the numbers, but I want to say that in of itself is probably not the best advice because you want to understand what the numbers are, right? If you're putting content out there and it's getting like millions of views and you're, you're lucky to get millions of views and you're like, okay, why is this working? Let's just capitalize on it, try to make some small changes or keep working on creating the secret sauce or whatever you did to capture that lightning in a bottle. And eventually what's going to happen, it's going to, you know, numbers start falling. And then I believe in many cases that some people are going to go into the uh, freak out mode when all of a sudden they start seeing one, two, three videos or streams or whatever pieces of content, so the numbers start not getting as high as it was the previous one. And I think a lot of people see that. And that's why I say, uh, that's why I think they say, don't look at the numbers in that aspect. Yes. I want to say, don't look at the numbers, but try to understand why what you're putting out is not working. So I know that's probably advice that it, it, I know it is advice that has been spouted since you know the dawn of time uh, has been youtube and it does hold some weight no matter how who says it or how they say it, it does hold weight that you have to think that the content that you're putting out there if it does get success and you keep putting out content and it's still getting the success um, successful numbers you have to have the understanding that you your numbers will start to fall at the at the tail end of whatever you're being putting out there. Don't expect to have constantly numbers beating previous numbers and then those numbers beating previous numbers. It's not going to happen for for you know, forever. It's you will have dips and valleys, and you just have to learn to not see that yourself as a failure if you start seeing dips. It's just, you know, it's just the nature of the beast and with content creation and stuff like that. It's just something that you're not going to have a constant uh, rocket to the moon type of thing for the rest of your, your life. It's not going to happen. So I think the hard lessons that all of us really have to take into ourselves is that put out the best content that you really can. And work on trying different things here and there, especially as a new creator, because that is the best part of being a new creator is experimenting, trying things that you might enjoy doing or editing styles that you might enjoy, uh, enjoy playing around with, play around with different software. Uh, if you started playing around with like uh, DaVinci Resolve, that's great. Try Premiere Pro for a week or whatever the trial is. See if you like that better. Because, you know, not many people, not everyone is going to have the same flavors and taste that you have. You might be a, a, a wizard at DaVinci Resolve and just like, oh, node editing is, this is the best thing ever. While somebody else, your friend or brother, sister, whoever is going to see that. And like, what the hell are you doing? 
this is not how you edit video. No, what you do is you go into Adobe Premiere or you go uh, Figma or uh, and many uh, multitudes of different editing softwares. And you just got to have that mentality that, that, okay, this is what's working for me. It's not going to work for you. It's not going to work for everybody else. And that's a great thing to have because, you know, as, you know, content creators, we have to juggle so many different things that it's kind of ridiculous, really. <laughs> and there is so much out there that, you know, different flavors of content creation as well. There's, you know, your gaming creators, which is a great thing to see so many people who love playing games and that are just, you know, enjoying doing that because, you know, that's what they love. Then you have another person that says, well, streaming games is boring. I'd rather just, you know, play the game. Why, why stream it? Well, that's their prerogative. And then they want to do that. That's fine. And there's, of course, people like me. I like to do, do a little bit of both. I like playing games, streaming them, but I also do a lot more of this, you know, the podcasting, talking about alternative platforms or uh, looking at uh, teaching different things and how to get a chat overlay on your stream and something like that. It's just, you know, to me is something I like to do, but a hard truth is figure out what you want to do. I mean, if you like to do, let's say, uh, take for example, somebody who likes playing uh, Baldur's Gate 3, uh, they're good at it. And they like to, you know, help teach or show people different builds or different ways to go about it. Um, try that for a couple months because a lot of people try new things. But what I see is that they only give themselves a week, maybe two at the most. And for that, you can't really base uh, what's going to work or what's not going to work off of two weeks of experience, especially if you're doing maybe three days a week. So out of six live streams or six experiences is not really going to you know, decide your fate for the next six months. And it's unfortunate a lot of people have that mentality. I know some people back in uh, last year, they tried out uh, streaming on YouTube. Now, don't get me wrong, streaming on YouTube is a completely different animal to those streaming on, say, Twitch or Live Space or SharePlay. But they gave themselves two to three experiences to stream on YouTube. And then they got they say, Oh, it's not for me. It's like, well, yeah, because you never really gave it a chance. You didn't experience everything that you go through and say, oh, you know, no, I, I, I know what I'm doing. I'm a, I'm a streaming expert. I know what I'm talking about. No. Yeah, you might be an expert or you might know enough that to, uh, you know, talk about how streaming is over on you on, uh, on Twitch. But again, YouTube is a completely different animal and there's ways of how going about it and different what things that you have to do thumbnails and titles and and it's just it's just it's it's, it's, it's a different world really and they just nope it's not for me i'm going back to twitch it's like okay but now since twitch has decided to you know allow multi-streaming for everybody which is you know finally it's been years in the making and they're the last ones to catch up to that and to see that oh this I'm going to stream on Twitch and YouTube. <laughs> Look at me. I'm a go-getter. <laughs> like, yeah, you could have done that before, but you decided to, you know, oh, I I, I only played the game three times and I, it, it's not for me. So, okay. It, it's you do you. It's your prerogative. And uh, come back whenever you want. That's, that's the thing is that we have to kind of not coddle the... Uh, the content creators and stuff like that, but just let them figure out this stuff on their own. And it would, I, I, I know for myself, I kind of, I pull back when saying that, Oh, you should stream on life space because that's the best place to be. It's like, well, no. And for your 
use case scenario, it might not be the best place. You might find you have better success on Twitch, or you might be better off, you know, doing self-hosting on with Owncast or YouTube or wherever else. And that's just something that uh, as fellow creators, we have to get that mentality that we know what is good for you. This is because for a lot of us I have been streaming for many years on different platforms. And the thing is, is that, yeah, we might have that experience and platform hopping and trying different things out, experimenting here and there. What is good for the person that you're talking to or is asking for advice may not be the best thing to say, hey, try X because, or not X, the platform, but um, try hypothetical X is be good for you. Say, okay, try it out. Give it, give it a month, give it six months. Just give it multiple times that you're, let's say for live streaming F for an example, give it at least one, three, maybe six months at the most to see how it fits your play style, your creation style, and how you can go about, you know, trying to get a community growing around what you do on that particular platform. And at the end of six months, and if something where you feel like that you're not really growing or you're experiencing that there is no growth whatsoever, it's okay. You don't have to keep grinding it out. That's why I, I, I kind of don't like the term grinding uh, with, you know, that you're at, at the millstone and you're grinding or let's just say for like a Conan type of reference, you're on, you're on the wheel of pain going around for months or years until they break you. That, and that is how I envision when people say, oh, I'm grinding on Twitch or I'm grinding on uh, such and such platform. It's like you're, you're stuck on a wheel of pain and until you can figure out to get off of that wheel of pain or better yourself and become stronger, it's just like, well, you're not really learning anything. All you're learning is to go around in circles painfully and you're not trying different things. And to me, that is, is, is heartbreaking that people have that mentality is like, uh, it was just recently there was someone, um, they was touted that, oh, for years or, or a year or two, they were streaming to zero people. And all of a sudden they found success. It's like, well, on Twitch, it's if you're streaming to zero people, it's you're not doing something right because all you gotta do is you have your Twitch um streamer dashboard open and automatically you're at one streamer. Okay. So you're already above the zero stream, the zero viewer streamers. So you're out to one viewer streamers, which yes, it's you. It still counts on, you know, the, the listing. But the thing is that they touted it as a great thing. It's like, yes, he persisted on that wheel of pain for, for so long that all of a sudden he found success. Okay. What did, what did they learn? Just to, keep going for whatever time. And to me that, that I know what I'm saying is probably not going to resonate for a lot of people or a lot of people are going to say, no, you're absolutely wrong and you should feel bad for saying this. But if you're going that hard for zero viewers for so long, you have to change something. Something is not working after six months. Like I said, at the latest six months and that, that is nothing's changed change because you're not learning anything new or profound about you or your, or your streaming career. You're just on that wheel of pain going around in circles for a year or two bleeding. Yeah. You're getting calluses on your feet and your hands, but congratulations. Yay. You didn't learn anything really. And thing is with content creation, you have to constantly be doing stuff, trying new things and learning. Just not doing the same thing over and over again, because that's the definition of insanity is to keep doing the same thing over and over, but expect different results. 
which is not going to happen. And that's the thing that I'm learning as well as I go through this is that I'm trying different things. Yes, some things are not working out. Some things are. Um, for a long time doing this, I was thinking to myself, okay, doing this alternative platform, I, I'm not really, I'm not helping anybody really. But there have been these little nuggets here and there that people leave a comment on a YouTube video or, you know, talking to people that are um, outside the, the sphere of what I do. And even, even on the life space, I was also, I was, this is something that is like very profound to me. It's like, even if I can reach one person, I'm doing something that's, I know that I enjoy doing and is actually helping other people. Uh, for example, there is, um, uh, Corey, if you don't know him, he's on Life Space and he also does a lot of videos. He, he does a lot of uh, painting, artwork, and stuff like that. That he was being, um, not enjoying their uh, streaming position, their streaming experience with Twitch, and they were trying to find different things. They didn't want to go to Kick because we all know what's going on with Kick and that reputation that kick has so um i forget exactly how it, how it came about but i saw on post posted on mastodon about looking for alternatives so i was like okay let me just post out here have you tried looking at owncast this is something that you can uh, quickly spin up it's self-hosted you can control from the very beginning to wherever you want to do with it <laughs> And the thing is, it's going back to it to say, like, okay. And he said it's, he says it himself that he's not very technically inclined, which, you know, a lot of people are not. There's a lot of things I'm not technically inclined to in. And I, I can, I can vouch for, yeah, I, I completely understand. And that there's some things that, you know, don't click with certain people with when it does with others. And that's the thing is like, okay, I try to explain to him, okay. What you can do is go into Hetzner and uh, do a one-click install. Uh, go to your URL that you set up and try 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 my best. Unfortunately, my best wasn't best for this particular use case scenario. It's no it's no fault of mine. It's no fault of Corey's. It's no fault of anybody. It's just that the information how I tried to get it out didn't click in a way that made sense for him, but. What it did make sense is after going through a couple of things that I had uh, just got into the live space beta program that were just, it was like a closed beta. So I was talking about that in a couple of different episodes and different videos I had made. And one thing led to another is that he found his new home really that I think, I believe that he enjoys the live streaming experience on live space because he also reached out and tried and also got onto a peer tube instance that does allow or offer live streaming uh, space. It's called Makerspace. It's a peer tube instance. And yeah, there's some things there that are that works. But I think what is found out is that so this is just from my observation from his dreams is that he has a, a more enjoyable experience using live space than he did elsewhere. Yeah, it sucks that you know, the owncast thing didn't work out, but you know what? It's not gonna work out for everybody. And that's what I try to harp on a lot is that it's this thing is out there, but it may not be for everybody. And it's for, let's say it's for 50% of the people. Okay, 50% of the people will get it, work with it and have great success. The other 50%, would struggle, not have a good time, would hate it, and then would move on to someplace else. And that's, you know, that's nature. That's just, you know, the, the human experience. And there's there's no way I cannot force someone else. It's like, you will love Owncast. And if you don't, you're wrong. You're stupid. And stop being a content creator. That is complete nonsense and utter garbage. And I would hate to see anyone or hear anyone use 
something along those lines to somebody else, another creator, because that is just disgusting, really. And I would really lambast them. Does yeah, you're 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 um, putting giving you know content creation independent creators a black eye with those remarks. Please uh, rethink your values. If not, just remove uh, yourself from the situation. Please, thank you. Goodbye. Block. But that's just the things that I have to learn is like oh. For me, it, it it works great. I was able, you know, get instances up and running. Yeah, I had some troubles here and there, but I was able to get through it. But again, not many people would have the same uh, experience. And that's perfectly fine. And now the same thing is also with, like I said at the beginning, with kind of like building a community. I look at all these other places, and that's, that's something that I have to get out of my own mind and my own... Um, way of thinking is stop comparing yourself to somebody else or another stop comparing what community that you're trying to build to another community and that is more successful than yours and it's just kind of like a back and forth it's like you know you gotta stop that because you're not only just self-defeating yourself you're giving yourself anxiety you're, you're giving yourself uh, self-doubt and frustration is like why is this not working and I'm going through that process currently right now. I've I've currently got, I've started up, as you might know, if you've been watching and uh, listening for the past uh, almost a year or so, um, I started up Indie Creator Hub as a place for alternative platform ex exploration. And I'm thinking, it's like, yeah, this is great. And actually, I just before I started the, the, the uh, show tonight, I just answered two uh new uh two new comments on my latest or not latest but older youtube videos which is a great thing to me to see is that awesome that people are still finding these videos and they're having some issues i'm trying to you know help them as best as, as i can but youtube comments are not a great place to do any kind of tech support really and i'm I'm trying to find a way to convey that don't leave comments. And if you do, it's great. But if you want to find a, um, a place that you want to find more information, go to thisindiecreator.com. That's one of the sites I, I started up. Reason why it's this indie creator is because I was, I was, for some reason in my mind, uh, late last year or actually middle of last year, it was like, not many people are coming to my sites or no one's come to my sites. Like what's wrong? Is it the name? Is it the, the platform I'm using? Is it this? Is it that? I don't know. Hey Fox finally made it. <laughs> but that was one of the things is like, I was self doubting how I was going about ways of trying to get my uh, the website, the place to say, hey, if you want to, instead of leaving a YouTube comment, go here instead. And there wasn't really any traction because what's happening is that people are, are used to social networks that they use, like YouTube or uh, X Twitter or Facebook and stuff like that. And it's really hard, or even TikTok, it's really hard to get people to, let alone view your content, but also to uh, comment or interact with it, or even eat like a diamond in a rough to even use your content and go to your website and even harder to after if they made it to your website to make to have an account or make an account on that website to start interacting as a community member. It's just, you know, something difficult that these people are so like ingrained into the culture of that social network. Uh, you loaded a bunch of band lists into your firewall. Nice. Okay. Yeah, there's, I know there's some people that uh, sell band lists or uh, stuff like that, which to me is like, why are you selling that? That should be freely given. But yeah, it's just something that 
I I constantly struggle as even to this day um, to figure out what the best way to go about and trying to get people to come to your sites or to at least, you know, comment on your videos or your your postings or whatever. <laughs> bye bye, China. But it's kind of like that's the struggle that if not all of us constantly go through either from you know, the very beginner that is just starting out to, you know, the seasoned expert that once you get people in, it's kind of, it's a great feeling to see that, Hey, the work that you do actually ha has helped other people or, you know, has helped people look for these alternative platforms or, or other places that if, if they were just left on their own, they would have just been staying on Twitch or, or just stop streaming or creating content altogether. But to see that, you know, people are finding these alternative platforms is actually a really great thing. And it's something that I'm, I am extremely proud of that to know that just a little bit of work that I do to try to get this stuff out there has just a little bit of influence. And I'm not going to say or call myself or reference myself as an influencer because, ugh, as a disgusting word. No, I'm just, you know, bringing to light what a lot of people actively ignore, don't know about, or have no knowledge of, of it ever existing. And that's a great, that's a great feeling to have, really. And when I'm working on my sites, um, Especially kind of like going through the motions of it's, you constantly having these thoughts and, and, and talking to yourself in your own head that is what I'm doing good enough? Is it is this working? What if I change the name or like I said, went to a different platform on the sites and stuff like that? It's like, well, you never really gave it a, a long enough time frame for it to uh, integrate into what you're doing. And you kind of self-sabotage it a little bit because I know in the past my constantly trying out different uh, streaming platforms, I started with Twitch. I, I went to Mixer or when it first started or when it first not I didn't I didn't start on Beam. I went to Mixer when it became Mixer. Uh, I tried out Facebook uh, gaming, went, tried on Trovo, the Glimish. Uh, Brime, uh, you now, YouTube. I pretty much tried almost all of the streaming platforms that are out there currently right now. And I think what might have hurt my uh, potential growth was the constant moving of different platforms. And I know that I know that now. But at the time, I was thinking, oh, well, let's try this new thing because, you know, I've heard from so-and-so on YouTube, if you go or a, a fresh starter or, you know, the you know first advantage, first mover advantage on a new platform, you have a better chance of gaining an audience or uh, getting viewers and stuff like that, especially if you're working on a, a niche or game that no one really plays. I'm like, okay, let me try that. I fell into that that rabbit hole big time. And it's something that I kind of think to myself, well, I could have been at a better position, but I'm also thinking to myself, no, if I did not go through that struggle, I would not be where I am at. I'm at right now. I would have been still on Twitch, uh, doing the same thing over and over again. But the issue is that I would not have made different changes. I would have been continuing to do the same thing over and over. I would have been on that wheel of pain for years for no real improvement. So in the end, I think doing the struggling of kind of self-sabotaging kind of helped a little bit. I might might be uh, deluding, my, deluding myself a little bit, but that's okay. <laughs> it is what it is. And I would never have, you know, given uh, Trovo's a shot or Mixer or uh, SharePlay or Livespace. 
Yeah, Yaman here definitely improved in infinitely. Why are you give me those hard words, Fox? <laughs> infinitely. That's not even a word. Correct usage. I know. I I'm putting a law book right here now. So yeah, or even Owncast. I would never have you know said or did a look for alternatives to for live streaming. I would never have found Owncast and started my journey on doing alternative platforms. So it's kind of it's it's I know it's kind of cliched as like, you know, it's your destiny to go down this hard path. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not even going to try pronouncing that. <laughs> no, thank you. Percularities? Yeah. And that's what I'm sticking to. And that's, if you don't like it, too bad. But yeah, it's, it's kind of like, if I did not go through the struggle bus at the beginning... I probably would not be here. And to think of it that way is kind of like a blessing in disguise, really. <laughs> oh, I, uh, Fox, I did post the issue with the social stream into their Discord server. I had not heard back yet. I'm keeping an eye on it. Hopefully I'll get some uh, some feedback on what's going on. But... The thing is, is like, I know what I'm doing is helping at least one person. I know with Corey, uh, helping him find live space and him actually, in my, in my personal opinion, I believe, like I said before, he's having a better live streaming experience on live space. And that's a great thing. That's a great feeling to have is that. They're so, so thankful to say, hey, thank you for giving me uh, or letting me know about what this is. And it's kind of like, yeah, if I'm helping just one person, that's great. Yeah, I can't even pronounce. I don't even know what that says, Fox. <laughs> and it's and it's kind of like, yes, I like having that feeling because if you help just one person then that kind of snowballs into it helps two people and two people is four and then go eight and then so on and so forth. And eventually after years of doing this, you know, gaining more knowledge of alternative platforms, gaining more knowledge of owncast, live space, share play, uh, peer tube, castopod and failing at, trying to get those items and stuff work working and figuring out what's going on and what's new and the new updates it, over the course of learning of it, you can actually try, I can try explaining it a little bit better and to other people that, Oh, this person, yes, they, they completely sucked at it for two hours trying to get a peer tube instance uh, month up and running months ago, but had found a way to get to work or install and find a different way to have it installed easier. And it's kind of like, okay, maybe it's not as scary as it at first it appears. So it kind of helps somebody else to, you know, take that first leap into exploring peer tube or own cast or whatever. And they can they can get that experience like, oh, okay, ooh, maybe I bit off a little bit more than I can chew. Uh, what's going on here? Let me try taking a look. It's just that first step to get somebody in into the door is the most important thing. And that's that's the hardest thing to do because there's so many people that are, oh, I don't want to do it. I got, I got to work with a, a command line or command code. I'm, I'm not, I'm not a hacker. I'm not hacker, man. <laughs> I can't do this. It's too, it's too scary. And sometimes when I look at things like this, I'm like, what the hell am I doing? Like, like, why is this not working? I know it's supposed to be working. I put the stuff in that it calls for it. Like I had an issue with the uh, peer tube instance, not working directly with um, 
my S3 object storage uh, bucket. It's like, why is it not going through? What's wrong? It's throwing errors. I'm like copying the error and trying to do a Google search and nothing's coming up. I'm like, no one has come across this before. This is, this is inconceivable. And I eventually found the reasoning and why it wasn't working and was able to get to work. And there's some other things that are kind of be kind of being a um, pain in the butt, especially with Castapod. But I think it's just because of how Castapod works with S the newest version, I should say, with a uh, backblaze or any kind of object storage bucket. So it's kind of like I'm I'm stuck until find out a way to get past that. So, and that's just the thing that I spent all last, I think it was last weekend or a weekend prior, especially I think it was the weekend prior working with the pure tube stuff. I spent two days building up an instance, getting to a certain point to, okay, why is this not working? Oh, okay. Because I messed up here. All right. Nuke it. Redo it again. And then it's just rinse and repeat. And it's kind of like the same thing with you trying to build up a community is that you have to you have to fail in order to succeed. And that's something I'm learning. I'm still learning in how to fail gracefully, I should say. And there's some things where it's like frustrating. It's like I've been working on it for two hours. Like, oh, I'm going to walk away. I'm, I got to get some lunch or something. It's two o'clock. I'm hungry. And that's probably the reason why it's not working because I'm not working with a clear head. And with that is I think what I'm doing to with, with the community aspect is I have set up the discourse forum, but I'm going through like second guessing myself a lot of the time. It's like, well, instead of splitting a community, I go back to a singular website, really with the, with the, uh, the forum, the, the blog posts and stuff like that. I don't, I did it because I wanted to play around with this course and to learn a little bit more with that. But I'm thinking it's like, well, again, like I'm saying, I'm second guessing myself is why, why did I do this in the first place? When I want to incorporate a, like a, not really like a one-stop shop kind of place for any kind of independent, independent creators. I don't want to just pigeonhole myself into just talking to uh, content creators are, are like live streamers or you know, like, uh, video creators and stuff like that. Eventually, I want to get to, you know, people who do uh, art, comic books, uh, animation, um, book writing, authors and stuff like that, where it's kind of like a, without thinking of a better term, a catch all for all independent creators. And that's why I'm second guessing myself lately is to split out the indie gaming aspect of the actual community that I'm trying to start. And it's also thinking to myself, why you want to do two projects when you know, one project is just getting started. And it's kind of like what now you have two projects that you're going to be spreading yourself even more thinner. Yet you wish comics weren't just a pricey media. Exactly. I don't, I haven't bought comic, like an actual physical comic book in years, but I, on my understanding, it's, it's like three, five dollars, three to five dollars an issue. And it's something where I know there is a lot of artists, a lot of animation, especially like we, I can see 2024, I believe is going to start be a tipping point for uh, independent animation. Uh, cartoons, if you want to put it in that term, um, we had seen we've seen the success of Has Been Hotel on with uh, the the first season. They have had great success. I've been I enjoyed the series. I loved it actually. The music, the songs, perfect, great. <laughs> it's funny as hell. <laughs> Issues are ridiculous. They're so small, and fifteen percent of the pages. Yeah, our ads, so a trade paperback at least make a lot more sense. 
Yeah. And that's the thing, like with animation, I can, like I, like I was, uh, let me continue with that is that there is a wellspring of, uh, people who are making like these, these shorts, the short films, but they're animation. And they're what, what I've seen so far of a few of them are like, this is amazing. And it's a shame that, you know, these people, it's, I had previously looked at, um, like years ago, I was trying to get like a sci-fi community up and running that failed. And that wasn't a failure. It was just, you know, trying to figure out and finding out what didn't work. But there was a lot of short films that I watched. And it's kind of like there is more uh, rich storytelling in these 15 minutes with no dialogue. It's all just um, the expressions of the characters and this the storytelling through animation is like these 15, 10, 15 minutes are much better than what two, three hour movies are. And it's like, why is this not being focused or being seen by a wider majority? And it's kind of like, that's what I wanted to get to is eventually is start incorporating. I know some of my, my stuff, that I do as independent creators because I'm, I'm going with the stuff that I know, like live streaming, content creation, stuff like that. I have no idea what about animation. I, I do know with like the writing, I've, I've done some short stories and stuff like that. Uh, manga are printed for cheap, probably because they're not color inked. I'm um, looking for a complete set so far. Price of shipping plus more reading means more literacy, literacy, whatever. <laughs> Reinforcement never buy English manga. Also, FYE has new movies on Blu-ray for forty dollars. Who buys this crap? Yeah, it's like I said. It's like these these independent artists are you know trying to get their their stuff out there, and I just want to try to you know get more people's eyes on it or people who are interested in wanting to create or start drawing animation. It's like, what's, how do I do this? And, and, you know, get like a repository of stuff going that, you know, that's the big reason why I wanted to do this indie creator or, you know, another thing I've been thinking about is rebranded under all, everything under the indie basement um, umbrella. <laughs> Cause it's, it's, as indie and it's it's something that I'm going to be thinking out for the next couple of months and stuff like that. Yeah, your wife and I want to find live music events by cover bands, local group, and so on. Yeah, and that's again music artists. There are so many resources out there that you know, unless you are in that particular field or expertise, that even if you are, you really don't don't find them all that often because like there, there are these hidden gems. So that's down to the, down to the, the brass tacks of it is that's the reason why I wanted to do uh start this initiative and just be like, this is the indie basement It's um, go from any creator hub to this indie creator to eventually into the wider universe of indie basement we're providing information or getting gathering information that can help so much more people that I'm not going to call it my life calling. No, that's, that's kind of cheesy when I say it out loud, but essentially, yeah, this is what I like to do is, you know, to get the information out to these people that are, you know, love what they're doing, but they don't have the expertise of doing business, but they are mavericks in like whatever feel or whatever they like to do, but get them in touch with, you know, someone who does the business side of things that has expertise in comic books or inking of comic books or animation or music or anything like that. Just, you know, like, Hey, I know a guy or I know this person or I know this lady that does this. And it's like, that's what I'm, wanting to to eventually get everything move into and this wider umbrella that it's to help 
you to help yourselves to find your passion that you can continue to help someone else find their passion. And all it boils down to is helping people really. And that's the reason why I got, I know Fox, um, you, you, like you just said with the, um, you know, the live music and stuff like that is that there are a lot of people that don't know about this. And that's why I'm trying to reach out and, that's why I do all these these uh, this podcast, and hopefully I I help one more person. That's what I really want is to help that one person, and it's just kind of a snowball effect that that person, um, with their gathered knowledge, it helps another person, and so on and so forth. So my plan, uh, start wrapping up this episode is to I'm going to take the next couple months, and I'm. Nothing's changing. I'm sorry if I hit the microphone. Uh, nothing's changing yet. Uh, the podcast and everything is still going on. But what I want to do is start branching out into small little branches here and there. And I'm still, you know, focusing on independent creators, the content creation and the live streaming space. But wanting to find other people to that are passionate about other avenues of independent creators and uh, artists and, and all sorts of stuff like that. And next couple of months is I want to start moving things into a singular umbrella where I have, it's the indie basement. I'm, I'm thinking that having everything underneath the indie basement line, uh, naming, because it's just going to make things a lot easier for myself if I'm focusing on that one thing instead of like three or four different uh, domains and brand names and stuff like that. Um, I'm going to be working on, you know, reintegrating or bringing back the gaming aspect into the uh, community again. Instead of the two different forums, I'll have just a one forum. Um, and... I want to start doing some other projects that are not really going to take away my time, but are going to help me learn about different things um, in different aspects. So I know one of those is I, a, a podcast idea I had for, for a long time now is, you know, looking at uh, old TV shows, not really old TV shows, but TV shows I enjoy, but focusing mostly on like the canceled or ones that were uh, canceled before their time. And that aspect really, really intrigues me because I want to, you know, go back and rewatch some of these old shows and, you know, talk about them, like talk about the plot lines, the character growth and all sorts of stuff like that. So that's one other one project I'm thinking about starting up uh, relatively soon. And the best way to do that, to learn more, is to actually join the community. Join up at thisindiecreator.com, where you can, if you're an independent creator, artist, or a person that's passionate about, you know, this creator space of everything, you can join up. It's completely free. You don't have to start paying monthly. There's no subscription models or anything like that. Uh, there's no uh, pay to win. Uh, there's no battle passes to to sign up for. So definitely join up this indie creator.com and uh, hope to see you there. Now, this is going to be the end of the episode. Thank you for joining me. So if you learned anything, please let me know. Or if you have any ideas of what to talk about, uh, what we just talked about today, de definitely let me know in the comments on YouTube or on the podcast player of your choice or within the community itself do let me know i know fox i do these is about an hour you came in you were late you came in that door he went to your desk and i saw you don't think i didn't see you <laughs> but the episode will be up and running tomorrow uh i'll have the uh, it's the video portion on the peer tube um no, I was early. No, I was not. Mr. <laughs>
Listen here, Buster. But yeah, you can find this episode. The audio version will be up on a podcast player of your choice uh, tomorrow morning. So roughly by noon, it'll be everywhere. Uh, my time. And the video will be up on the PeerTube instance at uh, the indiebasement.com no video.theindiebasement.com just find my I'll, I'll post it on Mastodon when it's up and running and you'll just follow the link from there that's the best course of action right now because um, that's another thing I want to change it's just, yeah whatever anyways how rude I violated the sacred hockey time slot nope there is no hockey here <laughs> You don't even, no, the reason why I don't know this little bonus material here. The reason why I don't know is I have so many of them. That's why I also want to move away. Try to have everything underneath. If you, I'm not going to bring up my hover uh, account. I have over 15. I think I'm getting close to 20 domains. And most of them I don't even use anymore. They're just sitting there. And whoever is squatting on indiebasement.com, come on. I'm not going to spend $4,000 to buy it and then have it renew at $20 at the regular rate because it's a premium domain. <laughs> but anyways, I want to say thank you for coming out and I hope to see you on the next episode within two weeks. Again, this is every other week right here. Same bad channel, same bad time. And I don't know where I was going with that, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it in, but yeah, have a good night. And see you later, taters. <laughs>